Welcome to another enlightening episode of The Truth About the Plant, the show that takes you on a journey through the world of psychoactive plants and alternative wellness, all while delivering the real, actionable insights you crave. I'm your host, Christina Dees. This is my amazing co-host, Dr. Amanda Ryman. Dr. Ryman, you want to tell them why we're here? Well, we're here because there is a lot out there about marijuana and its benefits, its risks, and a lot of it is anecdotal, not necessarily backed by evidence. So we are here to separate fact from fiction. We want to provide you with the real actionable information that you need. You know, consider us your reliable fountain of knowledge when it comes to unveiling the mysteries of plant medicine, just like the guidance you might receive from your wise and worldly aunties or even your spirited, fearless granddaughter. This time we're unraveling the age-old question, does marijuana really work its magic when it's lights out? Can it lead us to the holy grail of slumber? Well, stay tuned as we dive into the world of weed and its bedtime stories. Dr. Ryman, does marijuana help with sleep? Well, that's a great question. Another one that I get asked a lot. So when we ask consumers, why are you using cannabis? Sleep is the number two reason for use right after relaxation. So it's definitely a very popular use of cannabis. Uh, but the question is, does it really work? Or is this just wishful thinking? A lot of us have experienced kind of the relaxation, coming down effects of marijuana. So does this actually improve the quality of our sleep. Now, I want to explain that we're talking about kind of two different things when we talk about sleep. Uh, one is falling asleep and the other is staying asleep. So for some folks, the issue is actually getting into bed and falling asleep at night. For other people, they're waking up in the middle of the night and having trouble falling back asleep. And so can cannabis be used for either of these purposes? All right. So I know we're talking about cannabis, marijuana, but Let's talk a little bit about some of the other cannabinoids in the plant, uh, like CBN. So I've heard CBN is good for sleep. Is there evidence to support this? Well, you know, again, really good question. Um, so a little bit about CBN. So there's a lot of different can cannabinoids. I mean, we're up to like over 90 uh, cannabinoids that are present in the plant. The one that most of us know about is THC. That's the one that's responsible for the high, uh, for the intoxicating effect. Many of us have also heard of CBD, which is a non-intoxicating cannabinoid, also with a lot of medical benefits. But there's a whole host of cannabinoids in the plant besides THC and CBD. There's CBG, CBC, THCV, CBDV, and CBN. Now, something that's interesting about CBN is it actually is what THC turns into when it gets old. And so the best analogy I can think is that if any of you are out there, you don't have to raise your hands, um, and you were cleaning your house or cleaning your car and you found like a really old bag of weed, like one that you stashed, maybe a couple years ago in like your glove box or someplace in your house and you totally forgot about it. And you're like, oh, look, I have weed. I didn't even know I had it. And so you smoke some of it and it immediately puts you to sleep. That's likely because the THC in that plant has now been transformed into CBN. And so CBN has gotten this reputation as having these sedative qualities, right? These sleep-inducing qualities. But the reality is we didn't really have research that looked into whether CBN was beneficial for sleep. We just heard what we call anecdotal evidence. So anecdotal evidence is basically somebody saying, well, it worked for me and it worked for five people that I know, therefore I think it works. And while if you have thousands of people saying that same thing, maybe there's some reality there. When you're talking about just a handful of people or even a couple hundred people, it doesn't necessarily tell you that it was effective. It tells you that there's a number of people that believe that it was effective for them. So I'm very happy to say that just a few weeks before this recording, a really good controlled study came out looking at CBN for sleep. So what they did is they had a few different groups. They had a placebo or control group. So this is a group that got an elixir to drink, but it didn't have any cannabinoids in it whatsoever. 
They had a group that was getting 20 milligrams of CBN. And then they had a couple other groups that were getting 20 milligrams of CBN along with varying amounts of CBD. Now, nobody that was taking this knew what group they were in. So you were drinking something, you didn't know if it had nothing in it or if it had just CBN or if it had CBN plus CBD. This is called being a blind trial, meaning that the people that are in the trial don't know which condition that they're in. And then they measured two different markers of sleep. So as I mentioned, they measured how people were able to fall asleep. So the time it took them to fall asleep. And did they stay asleep during the night? How many waking times did they have during the night? And they measured this for these groups over a period of time. Now, what they found is that when it came to falling asleep, the CBN group and the CBN plus CBD group did not have different outcomes than the placebo group, meaning that it didn't matter which group you were in, everybody had kind of the same falling asleep as they did before they went into the study. Now, where they did find a difference was in staying asleep. So the folks that were using CBN had a significantly better time staying asleep than the people in the placebo group, okay? Uh, but the people that had CBN plus CBD were no different than the CBN alone group. So CBD didn't seem to add anything to the ability to fall asleep, but the CBN, or the ability to stay asleep, but the CBN absolutely did. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that CBN may not be purely effective for falling asleep. Now, a lot of people, again, say, well, cannabis makes me tired, and the fact that I'm tired helps me fall asleep, but there really doesn't seem to be a mechanism with CBN specifically that helps with that. However, when it comes to staying asleep, 20 milligrams of CBN did have a significant effect. So what this means is that if you're a person out there who has trouble staying asleep, once you fall asleep, you may want to go to a dispensary and look for a product that will allow you to take at least 20 milligrams of CBN, take that before bed, and it should help with staying asleep throughout the night. Okay, so speaking of staying asleep, something else I heard is that cannabis prevents dreaming. And I love to dream. So I'm just curious, is there any truth to that? There actually is. And I love to dream too. And, you know, I've talked about how I take breaks from cannabis for a few days every month. One of the reasons I do that beyond just keeping my tolerance in check is because I want a couple nights of vivid dreaming. Um, I also really enjoy dreaming. So basically there's a few different stages of sleep. There's light sleep, REM sleep, and deep sleep. And they go in that order when you fall asleep at night. So light sleep is kind of the first stage. Then you move into REM sleep and that's where dreaming happens, okay, in REM sleep. And then after REM sleep, you kind of fall into deep sleep and then you cycle throughout those stages throughout the night. Now, THC, another cannabinoid in marijuana, it disrupts REM sleep. So that stage of sleep where you are dreaming, you do not access that stage for as long when you are using THC. So in effect, you are still getting a good night's sleep and you're still getting into that deep sleep phase. You're just not hanging out in REM sleep for very long, which means that people who use a lot of cannabis, especially cannabis high in THC, report that they may not remember their dreams or they get these kind of fragmented pieces of dreams, but have trouble really remembering their dreams when they wake up in the morning. Now, you know, you and I both said, oh, well, we love dreaming. So that's definitely a negative side effect for us. However, for folks who have bad dreams, so because of trauma or because of PTSD, where they're dealing with nightmares and night terrors, not dreaming is a very desired side effect of THC. And it's actually one of the reasons that marijuana can be so effective in treating people who have PTSD who are experiencing trauma because it does dull those nightmares and allows them to sleep through the night. Very good to know. So how should people use cannabis if sleep is their goal? I know you just mentioned PTSD, definitely, you know, want to try something like this, but um, overall, what, what would your suggestion be? Well, when you're trying to use marijuana for sleep, one of the big things is time of onset, right? So you need to kind of time it correctly. If you don't time it correctly, either you're going to be zonked out at dinner or before you plan to go to bed, or you're going to be laying there awake waiting for the cannabis to affect you. 
So really picking a method of ingestion and matching that time of onset with your schedule is key. So if you want to take something right before you go to bed, then we suggest inhalation, um, whether that's smoking or vaporizing, that's something you're going to feel right away. So if you do that, maybe 15, 20 minutes before you go to bed, you're going to feel that effect and then you're going to get in bed and it's going to help you sleep. It's also going to last long enough to try to keep you asleep. Um, if you want to use something a little bit earlier before bed, then something like an edible that's going to take an hour or so for you to feel it, take that about an hour before bed, and then it's going to hit you right as you're falling asleep. I personally really like tinctures, and I know we're going to talk more about tinctures as we do these webisodes because I think it's one of the most underutilized methods of ingestion. But putting cannabis oil under your tongue is a very fast way to have it absorbed into your blood systems. Uh, sublingual absorption is very quick. So if you put a little bit under your tongue, it's only going to take about 10 or 15 minutes for you to feel the effect. And then you can really dial in what you want. Also, if you're trying to find a product with CBN, CBN does not occur in abundance in the natural plant, which means if you're trying to get 20 milligrams of CBN, you're more likely going to have to find a manufactured product that has that dose in there. And tinctures are probably going to be your best bet. Wow. I could listen to this all day. We're trying to keep these episodes short. So if you've been captivated by today's episode, just like we have, don't be a stranger, share the love. Um, you know, as we wrap up, remember swing by our YouTube channel for an extra dose of wisdom and a whole lot of fun over there. You know, you got to share uh, the truth. That's what keeps us going. If you've got questions or you're itching to dive deeper, you can send them our way. We love to hear from you. And uh, email address is info at mypersonalplants.com because we're here to keep this conversation going. So until next time, stay curious, stay enlightened, and keep exploring the secrets of the plant.